rocket launcher, in one form or another, has been around for the best part of a millennium. From its humble and unstable origins in 9th century China, through to its explosive appearance in some of our favourite movies and video games, these ridiculous armaments have made quite the impact. But how exactly did this 1,000-year-old explosive tool become one of the most quintessential of all video game weapons? To start our story, we need to go back 1,000 years to the birth of gunpowder, to where the fuse of today's rockets first caught spark. In the mid-9th century, Taoist alchemists accidentally discovered a basic form of gunpowder while trying to create a potion for immortality. The alchemists called their new creation fire medicine, but as you can probably imagine, it was pretty far from anything that could grant eternal life, especially since it often ended up burning down many of their homes. The Taoist alchemists wasted little time adapting their fire medicine to create flaming arrows by attaching small pouches of gunpowder to the base of an arrowhead. Some years later, this design was refined so a more potent compound could be used to introduce more of an explosive reaction. This was then used in everything from fireworks sent into the sky to ward off evil spirits, to bombs intended to repel the invading Mongol hordes. The early history of firearms is kind of bound up with rocketry. And in fact, at that time, they'd probably be regarded as the same thing. And you see the term firearms used to cover handguns or portable guns, and also, well, basically any firearm, hence the name. So they're attaching canisters of gunpowder to hefty arrows and launching those at the enemy, setting people's stuff on fire, setting them on fire, which is a fairly horrific thing to consider. And the other effect is fragmentation. So it's a little bit unclear at what point that iron cases start to be used, but by the late 18th century in India, we, we know for sure iron cased effectively fire arrows or um, basic rockets, essentially a bomb on the end of a stick that is being fired at the enemy. The psychological effect is often sort of remarked upon, and that's, that's still a thing even today when it comes to um, missiles and rocketry. All these developments were documented in the Huolongjing, or Fire Drake Manual, which was a 14th century military instruction book intended to be a guide for all things fire weapons involving gunpowder. Either way, the experimentations would continue, with Chinese weaponsmiths creating peculiar creations such as the Nest of Bees, which was a handheld launcher capable of firing 34 arrows at once, often poison-tipped. There were also cart-based launchers that could fire anywhere up to 340 arrows and bore incredible names like the Chariot of Fire or the Hundred Tiger Rocket Launcher. There also exists the legend of a Chinese minister who attached rockets to a chair, ignited them, and disappeared in the smoke. But it doesn't go on to say if he took off or exploded into smithereens. Outside of China, one of the most famous ancient rocket-based weapons is the Korean Huacha, which was used extensively in Korea's defense against Japanese invaders between 1592 and 1598. One account of the battles reported that 3,400 Koreans repelled 30,000 Japanese with the help of 40 Huachas. These Huachas had a range of up to 2,000 meters and cast out a wide spread of arrows, so they were naturally a perfect weapon against the densely packed Japanese samurai and infantry. The British Empire learns from this. A chap called Sir William Congreve adapts this technology and creates a sort of bigger and better version of it using the power of the Industrial Revolution behind him to create essentially batteries. So just as you've got um, cannon, wheeled cannon field guns, you've now got um, artillery batteries that shoot rockets. And so that's another, another string to the military bow. Since the creation in the Far East, generals and tacticians have fallen in love with a humble rocket, and the rocket launcher would go on to see deployment across history, from the Congreve rockets of the Napoleonic era to World War II's shoulder-mounted explosive munitions, which were a necessity to contend with the advent of vehicular warfare. The Americans' entrance to the rocket launcher race was the bazooka, so named due to its resemblance to the popular 1930s musical instrument of the same name, but the shoulder-mounted explosive version sung a much angrier tune. It was among the first generation of infantry-borne anti-tank rockets and allowed for high-explosive anti-tank rounds to be utilized against the powerful German armor in the European theater of war. During the conflict in Africa and along the Eastern Front, Germany captured an inventory of bazookas and iterated on the weapon, improving its design to create a competing German launcher named the Panzerschreck, or Tank's Bane. World War II is one of the most documented periods of history in films, TV, and video games. 
with many films about the war released in movie theaters before the conflict was even through. This media served as propaganda for the war effort and showed folks at home the daring deeds of their heroes overseas. Of course, the many weapons moviegoers saw them use in on-screen heroics became synonymous with them and gained popularity too. While old-school action comics, newsreels, and movies helped cement these weapons into the public consciousness, it was through the medium of film that the rocket launcher really exploded into the realm of pop culture. And as the film industry matured and developed over the decades, each movie tried to one-up or outdo the action in the entertainment that preceded it. Movies tapped into the primal lust for bigger booms and more badass heroes with films like Rambo First Blood, Commando, Terminator 2, and Predator, helping to define the era of action cinema where bigger bangs meant for bigger bucks at the box office. I think the pop culture aspect of rocketry is really the spectacle. So the same reason that we like to punt these things into the air and watch them explode is the same reason we like to see them punted at the bad guys and explode. It's something bigger and better. You know, by the 1930s, we're used to seeing gangsters running around with Tommy guns, automatic fire. We start to see the first war movies and they're throwing hand grenades. The militaries of the world readapt rocket technology and use it on the battlefield, so certainly World War II onwards. We start to see things like the bazooka, recoilless weapons like the RPG come in, and they're just a way to add value, to add enjoyment. Um, on the entertainment side, of course, they're not much fun to get shot at. Um, by, needless to say. And never far behind a hot trend, it wouldn't be long until video games started to put rockets into the hands of their players. Be they accurate representations, science fiction facsimiles, or esoteric lampoons, it's fair to say that the gaming market immediately found their new favorite toy. Tube-toting 2D sprites would become a common sight in side-scrolling shoot-em-ups like Metal Slug. Rocket launcher. But it was when games entered the third dimension and FPS titles became the new hotness that players really got to feel the visceral roar of a rocket launcher. <laughs> the incredible popularity of the first Doom in 1993 not only helped popularize the FPS genre, but the weapons that so handily dispatched demons on the surface of Mars also got a taste of that same fame. From that point on, any FPS worth its salt would have to have those most satisfying tools of destruction. Things like impactful shotguns, huge multi-barreled miniguns, and of course the rocket launcher were no longer a bonus, but a requirement. This meant that the hordes of games that would release in the wake of Doom, each trying to tap into that same acclaim that id Software's shooter had garnered, would need the same suite of demon dispatching tools. And with the rocket launcher being the overwhelming crowd pleaser, it became a mainstay in video games. Players around the world sunk hour after hour into mulching enemies into gore and jibs, and all while, the popularity of the rocket launcher would only continue to rise. Not content with helping to popularize the rocket launcher, id Software also wanted to experiment and innovate with how far they could push the boundaries of their rocket-propelling boom tubes. As they entered the arena shooter market with 1996's Quake, they turned a tool that was solely used to detonate caca demons into one that could be used for traversal alongside the requisite wanton destruction. <laughs> rocket jumping is a technique that combines the force of the rocket's explosion with the player's jump. Together, the two create a burst of speed and height, allowing access to new areas and strategic opportunities. In some games, this would come with the downside that the player would take some damage, creating a kind of risk-reward to the technique. Its use spread throughout Quake's player base, which certainly helped shine a spotlight on the mechanic and added a new way to play in the growing arena shooter genre. And alongside the Quake series, the rocket launch even made appearances in Epic's Unreal Tournament and Valve's Team Fortress 2. Even today, the rocket launcher and the rocket jump remain embedded in the culture of gaming. Tying itself so closely to the DNA of video games was both a blessing and a curse for the rocket launcher. Over the years, as game genres changed, gamers' tastes matured, and titles moved in new directions, so too did the weapon that become so integral to the DNA of an action-packed shooter. In 1999, Steven Spielberg took to writing games. Hot off the success of directing the 1998 epic Saving Private Ryan, he went on to write Medal of Honor, the World War II FPS that would be instrumental in guiding the direction of shooters for years to come with its cinematic set pieces of actors' armor versus allied explosives. Medal of Honor and many of its sequels were enormous successes, and that success birthed a whole trend of World War II shooters. Titans of the industry were forged in the fires of a virtual Normandy, with Medal of Honor leading the charge and huge franchises like Call of Duty and Battlefield eventually falling in alongside them. 
But in each World War II epic, the inclusion of adrenaline pumping set pieces and the ebb and flow of vehicle and infantry based combat were beginning to become a must. And while previous FPS games were able to have massive bullet sponge bosses with ridiculously large health pools, the new era of 1940s militaristic shooters required a more mature and realistic climax to their missions. Many of these games would feature tanks and armoured personnel carriers as the insurmountable obstacle for the on-screen GIs to overcome, and as such, the rocket launcher would be called in to fill another role on the virtual battlefield. This would define a trend that would become consistent for the use of rocket launchers in video games. Whether a series featured vehicular gameplay and needed an explosive counter, or a sci-fi game needed a big boom to overcome its climactic alien menace, the rocket launcher would always be part of the virtual arsenal. They're in a different class. They're literally in a different class. We call them um, light weapons um, in the sort of NATO system. So small arms, light weapons. They are usually crew served, usually requires more than one person to Maybe one person can carry them, and in the movies, and certainly in the games, you're the only one carrying them. They're big, they're powerful, they're loud, especially with things like the, the Hollywood depiction and the video game depiction of the RPG, that sort of iconic white trail. So you, know, you know danger's coming. It's a great sort of um, cue to the audience or to the gamer to get the hell out of the way because something big is coming that will take your health way down. So it's like a gun, but more so. <laughs> Naturally, as multiplayer games became popular, some adjustments would need to be made, given the power and destructive capabilities of the rocket launcher. The term pro pipe was often used with frustration as a salty response tossed out whenever players were dispatched with an RPG or AT4 in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. For someone on the receiving end, they undeniably felt too powerful and perhaps unfair. But at the same time, rocket launches were a necessity, since their primary role was to counter the aerial killstreaks that would rain down on the battlefield. Balancing the boom of a rocket, however, has always been a tricky business when it comes to its prevalence in multiplayer games. Battlefields, for example, treads the line of having them being much more deadly to vehicles and armored targets than they are to infantry, while Halo treats the rocket launcher as a rare but extremely powerful commodity that must be fought over and its small ammo pool used sparingly. The rocket launcher is a weapon that, in games, elicits as much laughter as it does shouts of anger. It always draws an emotional response, whether it's branding fellow players a noob tuber or a pro piper, or cheering through your headset as you squad up with your team and take down an enemy tank in Battlefield. It's caused laughter as Spartans ragdoll across Blood Gulch, and confusion as enemy soldiers fall from the sky in Team Fortress 2. Yet what's most impressive about the rocket launcher is that not only has it descended from an invention over a thousand years old, but that it adds such variety to a video game's arsenal. It's like the virtual Swiss army knife of blowing things up. It's been co-opted and adjusted and remolded to fit an insane number of titles and franchises, but it's always recognizable and it's always exciting. Regardless of the genre, taste or direction a game might take, the rocket launcher has always had a place in the action. Whether it be the tank destroying bazooka, the over the top demon slayer showering blood and guts over a hellish battlefield, or the futuristic M41 of the Halo franchise scattering grunts like the pins at the end of a bowling alley. The rocket launcher's versatility is no doubt impressive. It's a weapon that's tied itself so deeply into video game history by appealing to something primal within us all. The love of blowing stuff up. I hope you enjoyed this look at one of the most iconic and explosive weapons in all of video games. If you did, be sure to like the video, subscribe, and join us again next week for a brand new episode of Loadout.